Good morning, and welcome to today's liturgical readings for Friday, October 16th, 2020. Today is World Food Day, and it's also the memorial for St. Marguerite Duville. Yesterday, I had planned to do the readings for the memorial of St. Teresa of Jesus. Today, we will reflect on the life of St. Teresa of Jesus and with us to give us a little bit of a background is experiential lead, Mrs. Goulet. Thanks for being here, Mrs. Goulet. Take it away. Saint Teresa of Jesus. Teresa was born in Avila, Spain on March 28, 1515 and died in 1582. One of the many women who have exercised leadership roles in the church, Teresa must surely be considered among the greatest. When she entered the Carmelite convent, some thought Teresa was a spoiled young woman with an unremarkable prayer life, but she soon advanced in prayer, experiencing visions and hearing voices. Dissatisfied with the laxity she perceived among religious, she determined to institute reforms and establish St. Joseph's convent, where enclosure and a strict rule prevailed. With the assistance of Peter of Alcantara, and John of the Cross, Teresa succeeded in founding the reformed Carmelite order of nuns and friars. Teresa wrote several works considered classics of spiritual literature, including The Way of Perfection and The Interior Castle. A great mystic and a strong, intelligent and active leader, Teresa was canonized in 1622 and in 1970 became the first woman to be declared a doctor of the church. She is a patron of Spain. An amazing saint she is. We'll begin today in the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of mercy and compassion, who led St. Marguerite Duville to embrace the way of the cross and to devote her ardent love to assist the needy of her day, make us bold like her and St. Teresa of Jesus. We pray so that we may imitate your own compassion and have the strength to persevere until the day you call us to share the joy of your saints through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ we have obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In Christ also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, you were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all human beings. Happy the people of the Lord has chosen to be his own. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we placed our trust in you. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the crowd had gathered by the thousands, so that they trampled on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, that is, their hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, 
and nothing secret that will not become known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed from the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Let's spend some time taking that phrase apart. What does it mean to live for the praise of God's glory? Saint Irenaeus once said that the glory of God is man fully alive. We know that term. We know that when we are learning about family life education, that we are reading from the program of Fully Alive. By that he meant that we are fully alive when we become what God intended for us, people who live in Christ and who radiate his life to those around us. When that happens, people take notice. They see not just us, but Christ in us. And that's how we give praise to God's glory. But what does this look like in real life? Here are some examples. You give praise to God's glory when you care for the poor and disadvantaged with a heart of compassion. You give praise to God's glory when you act as a peacemaker in situations in need of forgiveness and reconciliation. You give praise to God's glory in your workplace or your classroom when your aim is to work as for the Lord and not for others. This comes from the letter to the Colossians. The Beatitudes. We are in God's glory. We are in praise of God's glory when we take to heart Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Of course, we may not feel like we're radiating Christ in the world. Not all the time, anyway. We're all really aware of our weaknesses. And this can definitely discourage us. But it helps to remember that this process of existing more and more for God's glory, it is just that. It's a process, and it takes a long time. It doesn't happen overnight, but over the course of years of walking with the Lord, He accomplishes His quiet but powerful work in us as we allow Him. Frequently, we don't notice how He's present in us, but other people will see it. They'll see the glory shining from us, even when we don't see it from within existing for the praise of God's glory also means that we're a part of a work that is bigger than our life and it carries us into the next one. As Saint Paul says, all of us gazing with unveiled face on the glory of the Lord are being transformed in the same image from glory to glory. That comes from his second letter to the Corinthians. And it's this transformation that prepares us to be fully united one day with our Father in heaven. So we ask Heavenly Father, help us to live more consciously for the praise of your glory. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that the sacrament of which we have partaken, both physical and spiritual, may lead us to show your kindness and your compassion to all and prepare us for the joys of the eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time.